Hello everyone this is part 15 of what if Naruto was like Edward Elric in Fullmetal Alchemist, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Naruto and company had ambled back into Kanoa just a few days after the battle on the plains with Orokimaru. As they walked through the gates Naruto let out a massive groan, finally I can go home. I'm completely drained. Naruto perked up before he turned to walk towards his house, oh, Barkin, when you get a chance could you go to the hospital and check out Sasuke for me, well not for me, but if you could do that it would be awesome. Sunid shook off the Barkin comment and gave him a smile, sure thing Gaki, stop by and see me at the tower later okay. Naruto hit his chest and nodded, I'll stop in later. I swear I need a nap in my own bed because I'm wiped out. Naruto sighed, my house is miles from here, I really don't feel like walking so far. Naruto smirked as he looked up at Sunid. Naruto blocked her path before setting himself off to the side in the direction of his apartment, you know Barkin, if you feel like you're too old for the job you could always make me the hockage. Going from Gigi to you isn't much of an age leap. Sunad ran up to Naruto and hit him with a haymaker that sent him flying. As Naruto flew through the air a faint shout was heard, thank you Barshan. The remaining members of the party all looked on in confusion after that action but simply shrugged it off and went on their way to the hockage tower. XXX. Naruto fell from the sky and landed within close sight of his apartment building. Naruto groaned as he stood and dusted himself off. He sighed and smiled to himself, man that worked great, she's like a bull I swear, so easy to mess with. Naruto stumbled and began walking back to the house. Naruto opened the door to his apartment to find Haku and Joshiro macking on the couch again, oh for Kami's sake, every damn time I come home I have to see you two about to procreate. It's getting old. That's what your bedroom is for. Haku moved away from Joshiro and blushed as she looked at the ground while Joshiro stared back at Naruto. Kid you've been gone forever, why the hell should I have to plan for you to come back? Naruto grumbled as he shuffled to his room. A little consideration would be nice, I live here too big boss. Joshiro grinned and chased behind Naruto into his room. Alright, I'll remember that when you end up with a girl runt. Just remember, you were the one that said to keep that shit out of the open, you better follow your own advice. He watched Naruto flop on his bed face first and sigh as he had some questions, where did you go? You've been gone for over a month and you didn't say shit, I had to shake down the old man Hockage to find out that you had a mission and even then he wouldn't tell me what it was. Naruto rolled over to see Haku had also entered his room and had seated herself on the edge of the bed. He sat up and began to tell them the entire story of the trip. At the end Joshiro was grinning and stroking his chin, ha. Orochi team seems to be having a little trouble after my little gift, oh I'm so awesome. Naruto grinned, I have to show you my jutsu that Ero Senen taught me sometime. The scene was interrupted by a knock at the door. Joshiro grabbed Naruto and pushed him to his feet, you go get it. Naruto glared at him, fuck you big boss. Naruto walked to the front door and opened it to see Sasuke Uchiha standing in the way with Sakura standing behind, a worried look evident on her face, um, can I help you? Sasuke narrowed his eyes and clinched his fists, fight me Dobe. Naruto gave him a deadpan look before his face turned to Sakura, did Sunid already heal him? Sakura nodded as Naruto scratched his head, damn that was fast, Naruto turned his attention back to Sasuke, no. Naruto shut the door in his face as Sasuke howled from behind the wood door, don't ignore me you loser. Come out and fight me. Naruto went to his couch to watch TV, no. Your dumbass just got out of the hospital probably not an hour ago and I don't feel like putting you back in right now, and I can't just go and fight a genin, I'm your superior, that would get me court-martialed. Joshiro and Haku walked back into the room as Haku took a seat on an adjacent seat to watch TV with Naruto, Naruto-kun what's with all of the yelling? Naruto jerked his thumb towards the door, the team wants to fight me right after he got out of the hospital, I said hell no. Joshiro walked to the kitchen, yo I made some rice for lunch. Who wants a bowl? Naruto smirked, you should have let Haku-chan cook big boss, your plain meals suck. 
Not to mention the fact you could probably burn water. Joshiro grumbled, shut up brat. Suddenly the door was kicked in by Sasuke, damn it Dobe I won't be overlooked by. Oof. Sasuke was cut off by Naruto driving his right fist into Sasuke's stomach. Sasuke crumpled to the floor in Naruto's doorway, that was really routine. I just got back from a mission and the last thing I wanted to happen today was you kicking my door down. Sakura panicked over Sasuke's fallen form, Sasuke-kun. Naruto what did you do that for? It didn't need to go that far. Naruto gave her a look of disbelief, he broke into my goddamn house trying to pick a fight with me. How the fuck did you see this ending, with a big ass tea party? Naruto looked over his shoulder at Joshiro, yo big boss, I'm out of here. I've got to go see Barkan at the tower. Joshiro walked to the doorway with his bowl in hand, who the fuck is Barkan? And why are you going to the tower to see her? Naruto was gone before an answer was given. Joshiro sighed as he picked up Sasuke by the back of his collar and looked at Sakura, yeah, I don't know what to do with him. Can I throw him off the balcony or something? Because I really don't want to deal with his bullshit when he wakes up. Sakura looked at Joshiro in shock, no. Don't throw him anywhere. A voice came from the side, I'll take him. The two turned to face Kakashi who had just appeared. Kakashi raised his eyebrow, what exactly went on here? Joshiro tossed Sasuke at Kakashi, the prima donna over here came to fight the runt and after the runt shot him down he kicked the front door in before he got folded up like a cheap ass lawn chair. Kakashi adjusted Sasuke on his shoulder, really? Sakura did that happen? Sakura looked at Sasuke's unconscious form and nodded, after Sasuke-kun broke Naruto's door Naruto ran up and hit him in the body once. Kakashi raised his eyebrow, one punch. One hit to the body was all Naruto needed to knock him out. Kakashi sighed, I didn't think he'd get so riled up about Naruto. I need to handle this before it gets out of hand. Kakashi turned to the kids, I'll deal with Sasuke, don't worry about it Sakura. Everything is going to be okay. Sakura nodded as Kakashi used a shunshun to leave the premises. Sakura looked out over the buildings as her thoughts were flooded and her eyes started to water, Sasuke-kun, what is happening to our team? Aren't we supposed to be close? Sakura was broken from her thoughts with a groan from Joshiro as he looked over the door, damn you Chiha kid, Sai asterisk I swear, my punk ass brother is home for two hours and he fucks up the house already. Man am I glad I decided to stock up on stuff to fix this. He looked over to see Sakura, hey are you okay? She nodded but her eyes betrayed her affirmation. Joshiro scratched his scalp, look, you can come in if you'd like and talk about it with me and Haku-chan, it might make you feel better. Sakura looked at the white-haired Chunin oddly, but why would you do that for me? Joshiro crossed his arms, you're my brother's teammate and you don't seem like a bad person. After what just happened you look like you might need some comfort so why not? Sakura smiled at Joshiro and walked into the apartment, thank you. Joshiro just left the door open as he went to get tools to fix the front door as Sakura sat with Haku. XXX. Naruto sauntered into the Hokage Tower and up to the doors that lead to the office. He opened the door to find Hiruzen, Jiraiya, Sunad, and Shizun in the office. Naruto shut the door behind him as the adults turned their attention to him. Hiruzen spoke to the young blonde first, our Naruto-kun I was wondering when you'd stop by. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, yeah, Sunid Barkin told me to stop by after we got back, so what's up you guys? Sunid shook her fist at being called a grandma again but stemmed her anger to speak to Naruto, I just wanted to know about the procedure to attach your automail to your body. It seems more like a medical procedure than a mechanical thing. Naruto nodded, yeah, it's kind of both. Winry Chan and Pinnaco Barkin had to attach the wiring of the automail to my nerves to make it work. It hurt like hell, it totally sucks. Shizun commented, that's amazing. Such a way to make handicaps basically non-existent. Naruto grinned, I'm glad you think it's cool because I have something to ask you guys. Hiruzen looked over Naruto with a curious look, you're asking for something Naruto-kun. What do you need from us? Naruto walked closer to the desk, I kind of need some time off. All of the adults gave him confused looks before Hiruzen spoke up, Naruto you've just gotten promoted and we're still recovering from the invasion, we need all of the higher level shinobi we can get. Naruto recoiled, well yeah, but I kind of need to go for a little trip outside of the village, 
Actually it's to the edge of the country. Somewhere near the fire capital. I need to go see the tailors of my automail to get it adjusted, I'm getting too big for my arm. Jiraiya nodded, yeah he's got a point Sarutobi sensei. Yes he's actually damn good, but if he has to account for a malfitting arm it could be a huge handicap. Naruto nodded, you see. I need to go as soon as I can before it screws me up. Hiruzen nodded, alright Naruto, I understand. You can take your trip to Resemble, but I can't let you go alone, I need to send people with you. Naruto grinned, I know Gigi, I wasn't really planning on going alone though, I'd like two people to come with me. Soon it cut in, me and Jiraiya can't come Gaki, neither can Shizu nor any of your Genin friends and all of our Junin are out on missions. Who are you possibly going to use? Naruto smirked, let me take Big Boss and Haku-chan, they'll be more than enough. Hiruzen nodded, yes sure Naruto-kun, I'll have the papers written up by tonight. Come back tomorrow and we can talk more about it. Naruto seemed satisfied with that response as he backpedaled to the door with a grin on his face, thanks a lot you guys, I'll see you all later. Naruto ran down the stairs of the tower before reaching the base of the tower and breaking out in a sprint, all right now there's one thing really left to do, there's a certain someone I need to see. XXX. Sasuke was standing at the entrance of the Uchiha compound. As he looked inside he could hear the sounds of lively chatter, of people living their lives. He could also still see the bloodstains and bodies he came home to see on the day of the massacre. He gritted his teeth as he remembered Itachi's cold eyes and his words on the day his life was ruined. Sasuke had trained himself to reach Itachi's level as something of an obsession for years, but the attack on Kanoa showed him he was still nowhere near Itachi's level. Now that he had time to think Sasuke really hadn't defeated anyone noteworthy at all since the mission to Nami no Kuni. After Zabuza showed up Naruto began to step up and fight the high level enemies, even during that fight Naruto freed Kakashi and added to Zabuza's defeat while he himself was incapacitated. Naruto repeatedly defeated the powerful opponents that Sasuke could not, and when Itachi showed himself in Kanoa he completely ignored Sasuke to attack Naruto. Sasuke tightened his fists until his palms bled, what is it? He seems to be getting far stronger than I am far faster than me. I can't figure it out, I have the Sharingan, I should outclass him, but he's never lost, while I always lose against tough competition. Sasuke sensed a familiar signature and turned to see Naruto flying across the rooftops amid the setting sun. Sasuke's eyes narrowed as he grabbed his neck, I must find out how far I've come. If Itachi is interested in Naruto I need to prove I'm worth his notice more. XXX. Naruto ran to the training ground of Team 8 as he saw the flash of the setting sun, damn I hope I'm not too late to catch them, if she gets home then my chance is shot. Naruto landed in the clearing of Team 8 startling all that noticed. Kiba took notice of Naruto's appearance first, Naruto what are you doing here? Where have you been? Naruto rubbed the back of his neck, I was out on a long mission, remember, I left the day you guys saw me at my apartment. Shino came up to Naruto and Kiba with Hanata in tow, what are you doing here though Naruto-san, it is very late in the day. We were about to head home for the evening. Naruto nodded, I knew that much, that's why I came out here now. I wanted to see Hanata-chan before she got home or I could kiss that opportunity goodbye. Hanata, Iped, at hearing that Naruto wanted to talk to her while Kiba stepped closer, why do you want to see Hanata? Naruto shrugged, because between the Chunin exam, the invasion, me leaving for my mission, and all the bullshit that's about to start up I haven't had any time to see her. And I know that you both know how much shit is up in the air between us right now. Kiba and Shino looked at each other and nodded before moving aside to let Naruto talk to Hanata. Naruto grinned as he ran up to the dark-haired girl, hey Hanata-chan, I just wanted to. Naruto turned around to see Kiba and Shino looking at them both, um, could we, you know, get a moment here. This is kind of private. Kiba narrowed his eyes as Shino tilted his glasses before speaking, Hanata-san is our teammate Naruto. Kiba picked up after, anything you can say to her you can say with us around. Hanata shot a subtle glare at her teammates who recoiled and turned to leave. When Naruto turned to face Hanata he saw her smiling and blushing at him. Naruto put on a sly grin before sliding up to her, well it seems like someone is getting a little bolder I see. Hanata giggled into her hand, 
Well if I want to keep up with you Naruto-kun then I guess I have to be right. Naruto put an arm around her, you know you're right. But I haven't even taken you out on a date yet, and you've been patient as hell with me. Naruto positioned himself in front of her and looked into her eyes, no massive crazy blushing huh. I guess it was a good idea for me to go ahead and just kiss you first, it sure seems to have helped yeah. Naruto scratched his nose, the thing is I can't take you out right now. He took her over to a boulder and sat her sewn, I have to go get my automail adjusted and I'm probably leaving tomorrow. Hanata reached out and grabbed his metal arm and looked at it, Naruto-kun, why would anyone do this to you? Why would anyone do this to any six-year-old child? Naruto shook his head, I can't tell you that right now. But don't be so down about it, I got over it years ago. I survived it and I'm so much stronger now because of it. Naruto looked out to see that the sun had gone down completely as darkness crossed the field, hey do you want me to take you home Hanata-chan? You might get in a little bit of trouble if you're stuck out with me too late. Hanata shook her head as she leaned against Naruto, no. Not yet, I want to stay out here a little longer, especially since you're leaving again soon. Naruto chuckled, whatever you want Hanata-chan. Naruto and Hanata sat in the silence of each other's company for long enough to lose track of time. They were interrupted by a presence behind them. Naruto recognized the signature and sighed as he parted with Hanata to stand up. Sit tight for a minute Hanata-chan, this will only take a moment. Naruto turned around to face Sasuke. Sasuke walked up to Naruto, you aren't getting out of this dobe. You are going to fight me. Naruto grabbed the bridge of his nose and spoke in a hissed whisper. You're really lucky I'm not big boss or you'd be dead by now for cock blocking. Get the fuck out of here. We can settle up later, I'm busy. Sasuke looked behind Naruto to see Hanata sitting on a boulder, so you're out with the weak Hyuga girl I see. It figures, a weakling ends up with a weak woman. Naruto smirked, well if that's true then where's your girl? Or are you so weak you can't even get a real one? As Sasuke fumed Naruto's smirk dropped, don't ever talk about Hanata-chan like that again or I'll beat the hell out of you, believe it. Sasuke put on a smug grin, you really do have a soft spot for the Hyuga whore don't you Dobe? Well she isn't bad, I guess I'll take her after I break you. Don't worry, I'll show her a real man. Naruto kicked Sasuke in the chest and sent Sasuke flying back before he looked back to Hanata, sorry Haim, I can't really let that one slide. Go and get on out of here, I'll be fine. I'll come see you before I leave, I promise. Hanata nodded hesitantly and slowly walked out of the clearing, be careful Naruto-kun. Naruto shot her a big grin over his shoulder, come on, I never lose, cut me some slack here. Now go on home. As she left his sight he turned back to Sasuke, this is really stupid you know, I could just turn you in and get you busted by Kakashi, but I doubt he or the council would even do anything to you so I guess it's up to me. Sasuke dropped into his taijutsu stance, it's time I put you into your place dead last. I'll show you what you really are compared to me. Naruto sighed as he stood up straight, that's funny, I was about to say the same thing to you. Naruto looked around, let's make this quick, I'm really sure we've already been caught by somebody and they're just waiting for the explosions to go off before they bring Anbu down on our asses so let's get this over with. I'm not going to jail tonight. Sasuke sneered, take your stupid cloak off Dobe. Fight me seriously. Naruto grinned, I only take it off for a serious fight. This isn't life or death, it's a glorified spa. Sasuke grunted and ran into attack, I'll show you how serious this is. Just as he jumped to deliver a flying kick to Naruto he found his vision obscured by Naruto throwing his cloak in his face. As Sasuke was stuck in the darkness he was pummeled by a quick series of strikes from Naruto's hands and elbows all over his head, from the front and the back. Naruto kicked him down by his back to send him face first into the dirt. Sasuke shook off the cobwebs and pulled the cloak off of his head to look at Naruto who just shrugged, what? You said wanted the cloak off. I was just respecting your wishes. Sasuke growled as he stomped back to his feet, damn it you're cheating. Fight me the right way. Naruto raised an eyebrow, we ninja Sasuke, we aren't really supposed to fight fair. And you want me to fight seriously, this is how I fight, opportunistically. I pick my spots, just ask Gara. Naruto set into his Muay Thai stance, now come on, show me what you've got. 
XXX. As Hanata moved through the forest she was stopped by a shout intended to catch her attention. As she looked through the area she saw Gara, Kankuro, and Temari coming her way. Despite her fears of Gara she still held her ground, Anno, what are you all doing out here? Kankuro answered her, Gara sensed something interesting so we came out this way to see what was happening. Hanata looked down, Naruto-kun is fighting Sasuke-san farther back. Temari noticed her worried look before looking at Gara and Kankuro, let's go you guys, we need to go stop this before Naruto kills the Uchiha kid. Gara and Kankuro nodded before jumping off to find Naruto. Temari stayed behind for a moment to give Hanata a reassuring smile, don't worry. We'll make sure the knucklehead stays out of trouble. Temari jumped off into the woods to catch up with her brothers, leaving Hanata in place. XXX. Naruto again was dodging Sasuke's rapid punch and kick combination. Sasuke leapt for an axe kick that Naruto blocked by bracing his right arm. Sasuke jumped back and grunted in frustration, it's all that stupid arm. Everything you've ever accomplished is because your arm is better than everyone else's. Naruto gave him an exasperated look, well if you really want an arm like this I'd be glad to cut yours off. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Naruto put out his arm for Sasuke to look at, my chakra control was shot to hell, even more so than it already was for years. I'm just now getting it to a decent level. I wake myself up in the middle of the night because the damn thing and its cold ass metal touches me when I shift around. When it gets overheated in the summer it burns, when it gets freezing cold it sticks to my skin. It's a pain in the ass, but it's my pain in the ass. That's like saying the only thing that makes you a decent ninja is your Sharingan. Naruto smirked, of course when it comes to you though I think it might be true. Sasuke glared out at the Jinchuriki, what are you talking about now you Dobe? Naruto grinned at Sasuke, what have you really done in the year that you've been a ninja? For the so-called, rookie of the year, you sure haven't done a damn thing worth noting. Sasuke gritted his teeth as Naruto closed his eyes and carried through, I mean you haven't beaten anybody, and all that keeps you from being just another face in the crowd is your Keke Genkai. You're soft, that's all I can say, you're not on my level anymore, either in rank, or literally. Sasuke flew through a few hand signs as he gathered lightning chakra in his hand, I've had enough of you. Get out of my face. Chidori. Naruto simply stood still as Sasuke charged him with his killing technique. As Sasuke narrowed the distance between himself and Naruto he found himself being held in place by a sand cocoon around his body. Naruto turned and smiled at the new arrivals, Gara, what's up? Thanks for that. Gara walked up to Naruto with his siblings following behind, Uzumaki, are you alright? Naruto scoffed, do I look like he hit me? But seriously I'm glad I didn't have to end this myself. Gara held his hand out to the side, should I kill him? Naruto rapidly shook his hands, no Gara. If you kill him we are all screwed do you hear me? Do not kill Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke started shooting his mouth off, you dobe. You have to get help to fight me. Drop me now so I can kick your ass. Let me go. Naruto and the sand siblings just stared, yeah, um, don't drop him either, I'll just get some assistance. Naruto created two cage bunshin and told them to climb to the top of a tree. After they made it to the top he triggered Bunshin Daibakua to set off a massive explosion. Upon the arrival of the Anbu he launched into his explanation of the fight and allowed him to take Sasuke to the Hokage. After the Sand siblings said the goodbyes and took off back to their hotel Naruto slowly walked in the woods to return home. He stopped as he felt another familiar presence that put him on his guard, Danzo-san, didn't expect to see you out here. Danzo came into Naruto's view, good evening Uzumaki-san. Naruto walked up to a tree and leaned against it, so I take it you saw Sasuke try to fight me. Do you want me to try and recruit him for your group? Danzo visibly cringed, no Uzumaki-san. Like I said my group works for the good of Konohagakure. Sasuke Uchiha has much potential, but his obsession with power overshadows his love for the village. I have a bad feeling about him. Naruto sniffed, so what do you need from me Danzo-san? I know you remember what me and Big Boss told you not too long ago, are you reconsidering? Danzo walked closer to the boy, I guess that it is fair enough to want to know about my group. 
After all, getting grievous wounds in your own village probably tends to make you pretty untrusting. Naruto nodded and sat down on the forest floor as Danzo followed suit. Okay Danzo-san, I'm all ears. What do you have for me? Danzo smiled, let me tell you about my organization. It goes by the name of, N.E. Naruto was walking towards the Hokage Tower with Jushiro and Haku in tow to get the exact details of their trip outside of Kanoa. Naruto was leading the way because of course Jushiro and Haku had to stop every few blocks to make out until Naruto turned to break it up, Kami what am I, the only adult around here. Why are all of the strong ninja crazy or something? Eventually the three made it inside of the tower and entered Sunid's office via kicking the door in. Naruto entered with a beaming smile, I love doing that. Sunid looked from Naruto to Hiruzen who was sitting off to the side. Hiruzen took a puff from his pipe, it's true, he apparently does enjoy doing that. Naruto and company stood in front of Sunid's desk, what's up? You getting all settled in Barkan? Sunid threw a paperweight that drilled Naruto in the head. Sunid stood with a tick on her head, I told you to stop calling me that brat. But go ahead and keep it up, because I love doing that. Naruto stood up rubbing his head, I can tell, so you got the trip all set for us. Sunid sat back down and pulled out a few haphazard sheets and looked them over before looking back up at the trio with a smile, Naruto Uzumaki you will take a team consisting of Joshiro Moyomoto and Haku Momaki to the town of Resemble for maintenance on your auto mail arm. Sunid reached into her desk and pulled out a scroll that she threw to Joshiro. Joshiro stepped back to read, we have a month, Sunid Sama this won't take three weeks, we'll be back way before this. Sunid crossed her fingers and laid her chin on him, you all will consider this a B ranked mission due to time, distance, and necessity. Good luck, you may leave on your own mark. Joshiro nodded, okay you guys, we leave this afternoon. Handle all of your business in town between now and then and head home by four in the evening ready to go. I'm out of here. Joshiro shot a two-fingered salute before he and Haku walked out of the office. Naruto narrowed his eyes and snapped at his brother's retreating figure, who the fuck made you the boss? Answer me damn it, fucking asshole. Naruto turned to leave before his head snapped back around, oi, what happened to the team last night after the you know? Hiruzen answered, he'll be spending a few days in isolation for attacking his superior with a lethal technique. Kakashi has already been informed. Naruto smirked, I sense many D-ranked missions in his future with reduced pay. Naruto then sighed, but that might just make it worse. Sunid raised an eyebrow, what do you mean Naruto? Naruto looked around the room, all of that will just piss him off more, and that's even if you actually get to punish him. Barkan, me and Gigi both know how the civilian council has a hard-on for the Uchiha clan. They'll probably just bitch you out until you take him off of probation, especially when you tell them that it was me he was fighting. Sunid looked confused, I don't understand. I thought you were a hero after the fight with Gara in the city during the invasion. Naruto shook his head, a few other ninja think I'm awesome, and a few girls think I'm awesome. Most older ninja and civilians still use me as their scapegoat, luckily I haven't had to administer an ass beating to any of them for quite a few years now. Sunid tried to speak but Naruto wasn't done, you should know this now because you need to know this, if you are going to support me like a normal ninja you are probably going to end up butting heads with quite a few of the council members seeing as how one of their favorite pastimes for the last several years has been, screw Naruto Uzumaki over. For a lot of what they say, just let it slide, I'm used to it. But if it affects more than just me, or it is such a major screw job that you can't possibly let it go then you can stop it. Sunid nodded hesitantly after looking at Hiru's and nod solemnly. Sunid then looked over at the massive stacks of papers she had yet to do anything about, you know if the Hokage was the strongest ninja in the village you'd think they would let them stay sharp by not piling on so much damn paperwork. Hiruzen grunted in agreement. Naruto nodded sagely, you know ever since I graduated and had to keep seeing Gigi Glower about this crap I've had an idea. The eyes of the two cage snapped to the young boy suddenly, making Naruto start to sweat as they stared intently. Hiruzen's eyes narrowed, so you're saying you had a way to deal with paperwork and you didn't tell me. Naruto waved his hands defensively, no, no, no. I just thought that it was so obvious that there was a code or a law saying you couldn't do it or something, I thought you knew it so every time I heard you groan about paperwork I rolled my eyes. 
Hiruzen stood and ran over to Naruto grabbing him and shaking him. Damn it Naruto I could have used this information 10 years ago you know. Naruto spoke through the shaking, I can tell you now, it still might be illegal, I don't know. Hiruzen stopped shaking him so Naruto could whisper into his ear, the old man's eyes widening upon hearing the revelation. Upon pulling away from Naruto, Hiruzen growled and ran towards Sunid's desk and surprised her by smashing his head into the desk repeatedly, stupid, 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 stupid. Naruto laughed as he began to walk out of the room, alright I'll see you guys in a week or two, Gigi don't tell her yet. I want to see how she'll look in a few weeks after knowing there's a way to do her work and not knowing what it is. Naruto shut the doors as his laughter could be heard all the way down the hall. Sunid recovered from seeing her old sensei bounce his head repeatedly off of her desk and saw him sitting on the floor like a three-year-old almost in tears, so many wasted years, such a simple answer yet I never thought about it, I love that boy, I hate that boy. Damn it he had the answer for at least a few months before I retired. Sunid looked down, Sarutobi sensei, what did Naruto say? What's this big thing he told you about being Hokage? Hiruzen perked up and a massive grin appeared on his face, actually Sunid, Naruto told me not to tell you, so sorry. You'll just have to get it from him yourself, in a few weeks. Hiruzen laughed to himself as he left the office, I'm coming back here every day until she breaks, this will be hilarious. XXX. Naruto walked through the streets of the village through the affluent part of town where all of the clan homes lied. Naruto came to the main entrance of the Hyuga compound and stopped in front of two of the branch guards, um hi there. Is there any way I could come in and see Hanata-chan? The two guards looked at each other strangely before one spoke up, we cannot let you in, however we can go and tell Hanata-sama that you are out here. Your name please. Naruto smiled at the guards, Naruto Uzumaki. The two guards went wide-eyed before the first one went to relay the message. The remaining guard looked at Naruto curiously before speaking, you're the full metal alchemist. The boy that beat Neji-san and won the Chunin exam tournament. Naruto nodded, yes, I guess that stupid name caught on after all ha. Huh? You're the third person I've met that called me by that title. The guard looked him over, what sir, full metal, about you. Naruto lifted his cloak on his right side to show his arm. The Hyuga guard's mouth formed an, oh and he nodded. Naruto smirked, exactly. The two stood for a second until the other guard came back, Uzumaki-san, Hyashi-sama wishes to meet you. Naruto lifted his eyebrow, all right then, lead the way. As the two made their way through the compound he saw exactly how big the entire place was, one family lives here. Kami, I need to get me a clan. Naruto also had thoughts on the upcoming meeting with Hyashi, okay, one of the council people that have been messing with me for years, great. I really don't see this ending well at all. The guard stopped in front of a paper door, Hyashi-sama, Naruto Uzumaki has been brought as you have requested. After a moment a voice was heard, he may enter. Naruto slid the door back to see Hyashi giving him a studious look as he entered. Naruto turned to see Neji sitting to his right. Naruto gave Neji a questioning look and Neji just shrugged in a confused manner. Naruto walked up to Hyashi and remained standing in silence as he waited for the older man to speak. After a moment Hyashi motioned Naruto to sit, please have a seat Uzumaki. Naruto simply lowered himself into his meditative style of sitting and kept his gaze on Hyashi who was making serious eye contact with him. Naruto had to hold back a chuckle as he realized what Hyashi was doing, is he trying to psyche me out? He really doesn't know who I am does he? After a minute or two of no sound or any change in either's position Hyashi finally spoke, I have been hearing much about you these days Uzumaki. Naruto lifted his eyebrow, what have you heard then sir? Hyashi stared the boy down, aside from what everyone knows, basically next to nothing. You have done a very good job of keeping a low profile for all these years. Your tenant puts you in the spotlight more than most and you still keep yourself out of spheres of influence. Naruto scratched his face nervously, ah oh, thanks I guess, but I know you called me here for a real reason and I'm actually pressed for time as I have to leave the village soon, could you get to the part where you do whatever it is you're going to do? Hyashi raised his own eyebrow in confusion, pardon me. Naruto nodded, yeah, you see important people have been trying to talk to me all the time lately. 
By my past experiences you are either going to somehow ask me to side with you for something, threaten me, or something that I didn't think of yet. Hyashi shook his head, nothing of the sort Uzumaki. You were getting closer to my daughter therefore I thought it feasible to get to speak to you soon. Naruto sighed, I guess so. Are you sure you're not going to threaten me, even a little? Hyashi kept his face impassive, no Uzumaki, there is plenty of time for that later. Naruto turned to hear Neji stifle a chuckle before turning his face back to unreadable, did I just hear a Hyuga try to make a joke? Naruto smiled slightly before standing up and bowing, well if you have asked me all you need to know then I guess I'll go look for your daughter now. Naruto noted Hyashi's eyebrow twitch slightly, okay I was pushing it with that last one, damn I'm stupid. Naruto smiled nervously and opened the sliding door to leave. Naruto stepped outside and shut the door as he turned to leave before almost bumping into Hanata, well now the person I came here to find. Hi there Hanata-chan. Hanata smiled at the blonde boy, hello Naruto-kun. Her face turned slightly worried, Sasuke-san didn't hurt you last night did he? Naruto waved off her concern, the team didn't scratch me last night, Gara showed up and helped me subdue him before we really got serious. I'm fine I promise. Naruto and Hanata walked along the compound. Hanata sighed, so I guess you're leaving soon right? Naruto nodded, this evening I'm heading out, I'm taking Big Boss because he was always there when I got my auto mail adjusted I'm taking Haku-chan because Big Boss would just bitch for two weeks if I didn't ask for her to tag along. Naruto jumped in front of her dramatically, rest assured though Hanata-chan, when I come back I am going to take you on the most awesome date ever. I am going to blow your pretty little mind with scenes of greatness and originality. Naruto looked around to find that he had been seen by many different Hyuga clan members that had stopped to stare at the strange boy including Neji Hyuga who was not standing very far from the pair with a small smile on his face, which in his case might as well have been a massive grin, this is the weirdest day ever. I'm so glad I decided to follow him out because this is damn entertaining. Naruto noticed the looks he was getting from the people surrounding him, the fuck y'all looking at. The people went back to their own business as Neji shook his head and continued to follow the two. Naruto looked behind him to see the Hyuga genius following behind, Neji what is going on? Why are you following us? Some privacy would be fantastic. Neji crossed his arms, I am Hanata-sama's main protector, it is my job. Hanata smiled, Neji Nisan, Naruto-kun isn't going to hurt me. Neji smirked as he thought to himself, him hurting you isn't really what I, or should I say your father is worried about. Naruto noticed the smirk and smirked back. Neji interpreted Naruto's own look as, if I really wanted to there isn't a damn thing you could really do to stop me and you know it. Neji sweat dropped slightly and continued walking with the pair as they exited the main gates. Naruto looked at Hanata and smiled, okay Hanata-chan I'll see you soon, I promise I'll be back before you know it. Naruto looked at Neji, and you. I hope you dropped the fate shit from before, I'll be seeing you too. Naruto turned to leave before snapping back around, pop quiz. Naruto swept Hanata into a massive kiss before leaving her to stumble on her own feet as he leapt off, cackling all the way. The guards looked on in disbelief as the blonde boy jumped off. One guard spoke up, pop quiz. What is he talking about? Thump. Neji sighed and shook his head, I guess she failed, Neji stooped down to pick Hanata up and carry her back into the compound. After the two Hyuga Genin walked a distance inside the second guard put on a grin, I like that kid. The second guard chuckled, well it sure won't be very dull around when he comes back. XXX. Naruto walked up the stairs to his apartment only to run into Kakashi as he was descending said stairs, oh Naruto, I was hoping to run into you before you left again. Naruto chuckled, I'm hoping not literally Kakashi. Kakashi shook his head and chuckled, no I just wanted to talk to you about last night. Naruto groaned, Kakashi I didn't start the fight. Sasuke came looking for me trying to pick a fight and I didn't even really do anything to him when we did fight. Kakashi stopped Naruto, I know, I just wanted to say you did the right thing last night, really. Naruto looked up in confusion, wait what? I thought I couldn't fight someone lower in rank than me. Kakashi nodded, you can't, but you can defend yourself. That's what you did, when you struck you struck to keep out of harm's way, you fought purely defensive. Kakashi patted Naruto on the shoulder, don't be too concerned, Sasuke will be properly reprimanded. 
Kakashi began to continue down the stairs before turning back to Naruto with an ice smile, oh and congratulations on your promotion to Chunin, I'm very proud of you Naruto. Naruto grinned at Kakashi, thanks Kakashi-sensei, that means a lot to me. Kakashi waved it off as he walked away. Naruto smiled as he continued to his apartment to gather his things. Naruto was about to open the front door before he stopped and a tick mark appeared on his head, Big Boss if I open this door and find you all on Haku-chan again I'm going to flip the fuck out. Naruto opened the door only to find Haku laying on top of Joshiro looking at Naruto with a smile on her face, you didn't say anything about me on him did you Naruto-kun. Joshiro's eyebrows wagged as he looked at Naruto. Naruto crossed and uncrossed his arms in a sweeping motion as he looked on with a blank face, I quit, I give up. You two are going to keep fucking around and get pregnant and then. Naruto heard stomping from next door until he was finally hefted and turned around to face Zabuza with bloodshot eyes, who is pregnant. Naruto shot a quick look to a gaping Haku and a pale Joshiro before turning back to Zabuza, okay, am I that mean? I will have to travel with them for an extended period of time after this so is it really worth it to see 10 minutes of Zabuza kicking Big Boss's ass? Could I really do this to them? Naruto shrugged, nobody Zabuza, just a few words out of context that's all. Zabuza looked at Naruto, then at Joshiro and Haku, and then back to Naruto, fine Gaki, Zabuza put Naruto down and looked at everyone ready to leave, where are you all going? Haku smiled and spoke, we're going with Naruto-kun to get his automail adjusted at the edge of the country. Zabuza shrugged and left the apartment, yeah whatever I'll see you guys when you get back then. He stopped at the door, white-haired brat, you and me are going to have words when you get back. Zabuza slammed the door to the apartment. Joshiro released the breath he had been holding and glared at Naruto, I should kick your ass. Naruto glared right back, you should be kissing my ass because I just saved yours. Seriously, get it together you guys, I am really going to hate waking you two up in the morning. Naruto shuffled to his bedroom to grab his pack. Joshiro jumped up and growled, he said he was going to, have words with me, when we get back. Naruto yelled from the back, you really think he's going to remember that crap in three weeks. Joshiro straightened up, oh okay, I guess that will work. Naruto came from the back and patted Joshiro on the cheek before sighing and walking past, I really need to move out of here. Joshiro pulled Haku to her feet and picked up his own pack, right, so you guys ready to go. Haku nodded happily and Naruto walked to the door, let's go, now that I know my arm is jacked it feels weird. Naruto descended the steps as he pulled a slip of paper from his pocket. We'll talk when you get back. Naruto sighed, sometimes I think things would be easier if people thought I was a loser, well more people. XXX. In Awagako the Suchikage had called a single ninja to his office for a short meeting. A cloaked figure strode into his office and stopped in front of his desk, ah right on time. I like that, just the professional you were made out to be. A feminine voice spoke up from the cloaked figure, do I have a new mission Suchikage sama The small man smirked, yes I have something for you to do. He stood and faced the wall behind him, Kanoa has someone of great interest to me. The boy is rising quickly and apparently has enough skill to engage opponents far beyond himself and come out victorious. He's getting a little famous, you may have heard of him as he is relatively new. The man dropped a manila folder on the desk and motioned for the female to read it. She picked it up and flipped to the first page, the Fullmetal Alchemist. Really? The Suchikage nodded, yes, keep on reading for a while longer. The girl kept reading until her eyes widened and dropped the folder while holding one picture in her fist, this son of a bitch looks just like the. The Suchikage raised his hand, I know. The boy has a natural aptitude for combat, that coupled with a destructive new style of combat makes him worth getting for ourselves. The fact that he looks just like the scourge of Iwa, that's just another reason for us to dispense of him. Any shot we can take at Kanoa we should, without hesitation. The hooded girl nodded, how am I to find him sir? The old man smiled again, that's the easy part. We already know where he's going to be. Kanoa isn't as secure as they would have you think these days. Our mole has said he will be somewhere around the capital soon. Wait him out, track him, and capture him if at all possible. Plug the boy for information and bring him back to Iwa, or kill him, whichever is applicable for you. 
The girl smirked, of course Suchikij sama no need to worry about anything. She pulled her hood down to reveal a tanned face with brown hair pulled back into a ponytail leaving bangs to feature her face, you have it was number one rookie Jonan on the issue, it'll be handled in no time. XXX. Naruto, Haku, and Joshiro were sitting by the fire at their campsite for the night. Joshiro had Haku leaning against him while on the other side Naruto simply sat looking at his arm. Suddenly a random shock went up his spine. Joshiro and Haku quirked an eyebrow at the blonde boy, what was that little buddy? Naruto shook his head, I don't know, I just got the feeling that I'm going to be getting my ass kicked soon. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.